the, the nature of really personal writing, which everybody here does, um, and how difficult that can be sometimes. So I'm going to kick off with just a personal example, and then I'll back out of it and leave the, uh, the mic for everybody else. But um, I just thought this would be a good sort of intro in. So at the moment, I'm writing a book which is about women in addiction. So it's part research, a bit of a memoir. Um, and I write about child sexual abuse. And I find that I feel the shame as I'm writing it. And it's not shame at the topic matter. It's shame that I'm asking people to listen to what I'm saying. I feel like um, perhaps being a woman, it's not natural to ask to be heard, especially about difficult topics. Um, never edited myself. <laughs> Always just... I, I don't know, I I'm, must be very, I don't know, I think I'm a bit, I don't know what I am, I just, I just put everything out there, I never even think about it, I just sort of write the lyrics, write the songs in the moment, never felt shame, embarrassment, never felt like I've had to apologise, I, I don't know, I just write about anything I want, and just put it out there, and sing about it, and go nuts, and... <laughs> Um, you know, um, there's other areas of my life where I feel shame and embarrassment, but not in that sort of arena or that format. I think for me personally, writing about traumatic stuff, it's it doesn't really fix it. Or yeah, I don't think any, anything really fixes that besides therapy. Um, so I think the therapy fixes it. I think write. I think writing for me is a way to make the trauma more bearable and to sort of make sense of it in some way. This is a really terrible analogy, but I like to think of it as like a hot potato and the art is the foil and like it's hurting me, but I can still hold it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> I like a hot potato. Yeah. Yeah, I think once you write it, it belongs to whoever reads it. It's, it's a different book, whoever reads it, or yeah. it's a different joke. Whoever, whoever gets it, they're going to put themselves in it, and it's, it's like a relationship. So I don't control it anymore, and I, so, in other words, yeah, I don't care what people think of me. <laughs> because, because it's not about me, and it's about, um, hopefully, somebody finds something out about themselves, and they feel, you know, they're ready for more. <laughs> Uh, for me though, my writing is, like a lot of the time, it's quite comedic and that's because I love satire and the comedy's coming from a place of deep rage. <laughs> um, because I feel like um, when you hop on your soapbox and you rant, people are less inclined to listen to the point you have to make, so when you make them laugh and they're like, huh, that was quite smart, it's like, yeah, I've just brainwashed you. <laughs> I know you get some very strange letters. Uh, people coming up to you a lot, I guess. Yeah, yeah, mine are almost always exactly the same. They say, I read you when I was this many years old and I was living in a bad circumstance for this reason and that and I thought that was going to be my life. And then I read this and I thought, this doesn't have to be my life. There's a whole, I can go do something, I can go be something, I can go, like, not necessarily like, be somebody, but I can, you know, if I want to be nothing, I can be nothing, I can just do anything. And I hear that, and every single time it's a different, like, the blanks are the different, like how old they were, what circumstances they were in, and what it was that they imagined that they could go try to do, and um, that's it. It's, like, yeah, I'm happy about that. Because that's what writers did for me when I was trapped. I, would, I read things and I, I thought, I can go visit a relative in Russia and then end up staying for 13 years because there's snow and it doesn't stop and there's all my carriages. You know, I, I mean, I really thought, like, that's going to be, like, whatever I read, I thought, that's going to be my life. And so, um, you know, I'm happy to carry on. You sort of have to figure out who you are early on and separate your idea of what it means to be a woman from who you are as a person. It really made me realise that gender was a complete construct because you lose your hair, which is like such a significant marker of femininity, and it's like, I'm the same person inside that everyone is treating me differently. I guess I just, I'm kind of like proud of my flaws and quirks and whatever is wrong with me, like, 
maybe proud is not the word, but I just, you know, I'm okay singing about it and then the songs reflect it back at me and I'm like, oh, I am masochistic or I am this and that, so hell. It's like, I don't know, Patsy and Fab, she says this great line of like, how fabulous her flaws are. It's like, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know.